I am Jeremiah Ajuda Dusu, the author of Jad's Business and Financial Accounting. Welcome to class again today. Okay, let's not waste time. Okay, all right. Um, you're still on group, group profit and loss. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> last class we talked about um, income from subsidiary, right? So today we're looking at another aspect. Okay, so it's uh, so today we're looking at um, okay, or you can call it. Uh, Reserve uh, deductions. Okay. All right. So what we're actually saying here <clears throat> is that uh, you know, as, as a business or as a company, when profit is made, of course, after paying tax, you know, <clears throat> you pay dividends. Of course, you pay dividends, and then whatever is left is referred to as undistributed profit, right? Or what you call uh, retained profit. Okay. So that means that uh, you have a particular profit or amount left after you know uh, appropriating or after deducting for dividends and maybe tax. After the, after the double tax and then dividend and all that. So it means that whatever is left is, you know, uh, kept in the business, you know, for various purposes. But then there is also, you know, uh, sometimes where the business, you know, has some projects or has some plans that requires funding and then uh directors who decide to you know keep some part of the profit for that purpose so maybe we have on distributed profit the latter tax dividend and all that if we have profit of let's say a hundred billion now out of this hundred you can still decide to say okay we have some projects let's create a reserve for it okay so that you know we can have that reserve specifically for that very project so it means that when you have this profit after taking out tax and after paying what dividend you might want to also make reserves out of this so that means, let's say, you take out 30. So that means 70 will become the what? Undistributed profit or the retained profit. So this is what transferred or appropriated or deducted for what? For reserve. But the truth remains that the reserve can be for specific purpose or non-specific words also you can have specific reserve and then you can have non-specific reserve so when you say spe not specific sometimes we can say general when you say specific it means that the reserve is for a particular purpose so that reserve has been created for a particular purpose and then it cannot be used for any other purpose right aha but when you have no specific or general reserve, it means that you could have that reserve utilized for what 
various purposes as they, what, as they arise. But where it is specific is for that very purpose. Okay? So whatever type of reserve that want to be created, okay, it's at, you know, should I say it's the decision of the company to decide that. Okay? But what we're not saying here is that the subsidiary can decide to make deductions for reserve. Even the holding company can as well make deductions for reserves. Okay? At separate entity level. So subsidiary can make deductions for reserve or appropriate to reserve. Holding company can also make appropriation to reserve. Okay? But what I want us to know here, or the attention here, is that at consolidation level, okay, the reserve that is considered is the what the pass that's for the reserve created by the subsidiary now. The reserve that is considered at the group level is the percentage holding of the holding company in the subsidiary. So if the holding company, let's say, has 70% control in the subsidiary. So let's say this guy here is A limited, right? So this guy here is what? B limited. Okay? So now, this 70% here is in what? In being B limited, right? This guy here is the subsidiary. So it means that if this guy creates a reserve, let's say 30, Okay, so at the consolidation level, the reserve that will be taken into consideration, okay, will be what? 70% of this 30. Okay, so we're looking at 0.7. Times 30, 21. So 21 billion will be what? The reserve of the subsidiary, okay, that will what be what recognized at the what group level. Of course, at several entity, this 30 has been deducted for reserve, or appropriated for reserve, or transferred to reserve. For our consolidation level, it is only that holding, the percentage holding of the what? Parent company or the holding company that will have effect on the what? On the uh, consolidated what? P and L. Okay? So that means that if, for instance, holding company also created a reserve, let's say the holding company's profit after tax and every other this thing, eh? let's say it is 105, and then they now created a reserve deduction. Let's say holding company now. Holding company created a reserve deduction of let's say uh, let's say 40. So this is 5. I think this will be 65, right? So this will be the undistributed what profit, right? Good. Now we now know that the subsidiary has a profit of 100, then there is a deduction of what? 30. So this here is what? 70. Okay? Now what I'm saying is that at group level, this is at separate entity level, now at group level, okay? So that means that what? Your reserve deduction at group level, okay, will be 40 plus the 70% of 30, which is 21, that would be 61. So that means that at consolidation level, where the holding company also has a reserve, or a deduction for reserve, or an appropriation for reserve, you only take the holding company's reserve, and then the percentage holding of the holding company in the subsidiary. You take that word percentage of the word subsidiary reserve. That is what will what have effect on the what consolidated what profit and what loss. Okay, so that's it for this very class. A very simple one. We're just talking about the fact that you know there's a reserve created by what 
by the subsidiary or the holding company. And then we'll just talk about how to what, treat it as consolidation words level. Okay, so take your time, go through it. If you have questions, you can reach me in the number of the Let's take a question so we understand what we're talking about here. Yeah. Okay, so the Let's quickly take this question so we understand what we're talking about here. So we have, uh, what do we have here? Kings and Queens. Okay, so we have Kings and Queens. The folio represents the income statement of Kings PLC and Queens PLC at a rate of about 18. So we have Kings, Queens. Okay, so we have turned over close all the way down to retain profit carried forward. Okay, so then after that we have, um, Additional information there, King's PLC acquired 80% shares in Queen's PLC on Tavet Matter and World 16 when its profit was 810,000 credit balance. It also acquired 40% preference shares in Queen's on the Tavet Matter and World 17. Okay, so I think I've already explained, um, there's already a class on preference shares and preference, so you should be able to uh, treat that. And then there's another information here, interest expense of Queen's PLC includes interest on a loan of 10 million received from King's PLC at an annual interest of what 10 percent. I think that's uh, interest on intra group loan. I think there's a class on that as well. You should be able to, you should look at that to have an idea of what we're talking about here. So, not about the only adjustment here. So, we're going to have to quickly, you know, look at this. So, you know, we have uh, consolidation. Uh, Schedule. So what do we have? We have uh, kings, queens. We have our adjustments C, P, and L. Okay. So what do we have? Turn over. What's the turn over there? We have 1652. We have uh, cost of sales. What's the cost of sales there? 32400. Then what do we have? 28080. So what do we have there? Gross profit twenty seven six hundred. Then what do we have? Twenty three nine twenty. So what else? Total expenses. We have six nine hundred. Five nine eight. So you take that out. So this is what operating profit. I think the how there. So what we have twenty seven hundred. Seventeen nine forty. We have other income. What's other income there? 4140. Three five eight eight. Okay. So what else do we have? Income from subsidiary. So what do you have there? Eleven one two six. So we have profit before tax. So we're going to put that there. Thirty five nine six six. 
And then what do you have? 21528. So what's our tax there? What's our tax? Tax is uh, 8599. What do we have here? 6889. We have profit after tax. 27376. Excuse me. 27367. 14639. Okay. Now, adjustments. So we have. Uh, Interest expense of Queen's PLC includes interest on loan of 10 on the loan of 10 million received from King's PLC at an annual interest of 10 percent. Okay, so we have a loan to be worth 10 million, interest is what. 10%, right? So that will be 10 over 100 times 10 million. So that's what? 1 million. So that's 1 million. Okay? So if you have that 1 million, what do you have? That will be adjusted for. Okay, but don't forget that the one million is an interest expense to the person receiving the loan, which is Coins PLC. But don't forget that to the person giving out the loan is an income. So we have to adjust for that. So I already taught a class on this, so you can go back to the class where I taught interest on intra-group loan. I explained this. So it means that. For Queens, it's an expense, which would have been captured. So there's an expense here, so we have to take it out of this place. Okay? Then for Kings, it's an income. Right? Now we'll be taking out of this place. Okay? Good. So let's go. There's no adjustment here. So that's 60 plus 52. There's no adjustment here. So what do we have? 60,000 plus 52,000. That would be 112,000. Cost of sales here. Cost of sales is... Uh, cost of sales is 32,400 plus... 28080 that's 6480 6480 so we take that out what do you have there 11, that's 51 520 okay so this will be This will be 6900 plus 5980 minus 1000. That would be our 11880. So you take that out. What do you have there? 51520. That would be 39640. So this comes down here. Okay? So when you test it with this, you give you this. So what do we have? Let's go. Let's go. We have a uh, 2700 plus 17940. Okay. Plus 1000. That's 39640. Okay. So 
you have this now. Four one forty. Four one forty plus three. Excuse me. We have four one forty plus three five eight eight minus one thousand. So this is six seven two eight. Six seven two eight. So we have six seven two eight. Okay. Now income from subsidiary. Remember, I, I, I thought the class on income, income from subsidiary as well. Okay, so the income is here, and don't forget that it is also from the income generated by the what? By the subsidiary. Okay, so at any level that's fine, but at group level you can't stand. We actually eliminate, so we have to take this out. Eleven, one, two, six. So this goes out. So we dash here. Okay, so what do we have? We have thirty nine, six forty. Plus six seven two eight. That's four six three six eight. So what comes down here? So it's a eleven one two six. This is positive negative group, so this comes down. So let's test it. We have uh, three five nine six six plus two one five two eight minus eleven one two six. That's correct. So this will be eight five nine nine plus six eight eight nine. Fifteen four eight eight. What do we have? For this is three six eight. Minus fifteen. That's thirty eight eighty. So this will come down as eleven one two six. So let's test this. Twenty seven three six seven plus fourteen six three nine minus eleven one two six thirty eight eighty. Okay. So at this point, what do we have to do? We have the uh, holding company to be I think eighty percent. 80% minority interest 20% has ordinary share structure then we have holding company 40% minority interest 60% so this is Preference share what structure. So first and first. So we have minority interest for ordinary share. That would be profit after tax as uh, fourteen six three nine minus what the preference dividend. Declared by the subsidiary one four six four minus one four six four. We have fourteen six three nine minus one four six four. That's 13175, right? That will now be 
multiplied by my monthly price here is 20 percent 0.2 so what do we have so we have two six three five two six three five okay then preference share right what's the preference share now minority interest preference that will be 60 percent 0.6 times what do you have one four six four so what do you have there We have uh, 0 0.6 times 1464. We have 878.4. So that means minority interest in total will be 2635 plus 878.4. Okay, I'll be plus 2635. So we have 3513.4. That's minority interest. Okay. So let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I proceed now to the next one. We have uh, We have uh, turnover one one two cost of sales sixty four eighty. Gross profit fifty one five twenty total expense here eh? eleven eight eighty operating profit thirty nine six forty We have uh, other income there, 6728. Okay, so we have profit before tax to be 46368. Then we have tax. Fifteen four eight eight. We have a. Excuse me. Thirty eight eight zero. Okay. So what do we do now? We we'll say less minority what interest. Okay. So I'm going to 3513.4. Okay. 3513.4. So what do we have? We take this out. What do you have? Thirty eight eight zero. 
minus 3513.4. So we have uh, 27366.6. So this is what? Profit attributed to what? To group, right? Good. So from this now, the group what will pay to what? Dividends. So we have proposed dividend. Holding company proposed dividend is 4568. 4568. We have a preference uh, dividend. What's the preference dividend? What's the preference dividend there? Preference dividend there is 1464. Four four six four. Okay. And now I put reserve deductions. So what's the reserve deduction? Let's show down here. That will be holding company reserve. What's holding company reserve? Two one nine two. Two one nine two plus. Okay, subs. Subs own will be what? 0 0.8. That's what the only company has as control times what was the reserve of so that 1757. 1757. Okay, so what do we have? 0 0.8. Times one seven five seven. That be one four zero five point six. So that's one four zero five point what six. So this plus this plus two one nine two. Excuse me. Two one nine two plus one four zero five point six. That's three five nine seven. Three five nine seven point six. Three five nine seven point six. So we have. Three five nine seven point six. So what do we have? We have uh, two seven three six six point six. Two seven three six point six minus four five six eight minus one four six four minus three. Five nine seven point six. So what do you have? Seventeen seven three seven. So that's obtain profit for the what? For the years. What do we have now? Obtain profit brought forward. So what do you have? Obtain profit brought forward. So what's brought forward of holding company is what? Holding company is 4,000. Okay. Uh, subsidiary will be what? Post, Abby. So what's the post? The post is 2,000 minus 810, right? So what do you have? 2,000 minus 2,000 minus 810 times 1190 times 0 0.8 0 0.8 times 
So we have this is nine five two. So that will be four thousand plus nine five two. That's four nine five two. So we have four nine five two. So we take this here. So four nine five two plus seventeen seven three seven. This is two two six eight nine. So this is retain profit carried on four. Okay. So all we've done here is all we've done before. We've just introduced reserve deductions, or what you can also call appropriations to reserve, or some suggestions call it transfer to reserve. Okay? And we'll just treat the question I you to understand that. Come with other, you know, adjustments that we've already treated in our previous class. Okay? So take your time, go through. If you have questions, can you can remember this page. Let's read the right answers. Alright? Don't forget, you can support us. I painted a camera that is free or sponsor comes in my test book for free distributions. See you next class. Bye bye.